uh, the, our next uh, step here is to have a fishbowl, a group here in the middle, and we'll be outside. And in this group, uh, can we have uh, Renato and uh, Gitan and uh, Carolina and Ellen and Gunther, please, if you can. Uh, So what uh, we will we'll be observing from the outside, from the outside, and uh, the idea is that you have a conversation on what what is it that you look at, or what is it that you look for, or observe, or the, the, the first things you um, you you give importance to, or you look at in approaching an organization, or in coming in the culture of an organization, okay, coming within an organization and coming in contact with the culture of the organization or with an organization, what, what is it that you look at first, okay? Would you is like it to pass? Okay like this or does it need to be well strong? Is it okay? It's okay. It's okay. Good. Good. Mm -hmm. Well, in order to start, just you are looking to me. <laughs> yes, and then uh, first let me uh, give an information uh, that when um, I and, and my partner <coughs> went into a, an organization, mm -hmm. normally we are requested to do a development yes. issue. Uh, the organization has some uh, ideas and would like to do some uh, improvements. And uh, so the first thing that we look is uh, the conditions of what we are offering. If it's a developmental process, we understand that there is some conditions in order to this process could be successful. And uh, one condition uh, is to have a clear understanding of uh, the issue itself and the intentions behind. Um, sometimes we understand that in our culture, organizations have difficult issues about how to re uh, deal with people, and sometimes uh, they need assessments that we don't don't do it, or need another kind of intervention, restructuring, or something different as just development uh, inside organizations in professional roles and uh, um, the perspectives of the professionals has. It's a good first start. For me, um, I pay attention to how the request for me to intervene comes. So <coughs> is it in writing? Is it a phone call? Is it through referral? What information do they, does the client include in the request and how do they express it? Does it refer to structures? Does it refer to dynamics? Does it include both? Is there a tendency to think in terms of something wrong or something missing or something confused? Or is it focused in the future? Is it focused in the past? Does it refer to history? Um, does it focus on individuals or personality? So lots of information in there. And then I would take account of my physical experienced response to it. Do, so sometimes I could have a feeling of um, pressure or a need to respond very quickly or um, fear because there's not enough information or... Uh, excitement or curiosity so I would take account of I do take account of those things and then I would tend to wonder to be curious using um, 
Burns theory of organization, structure, dynamics, culture, to think, what information do I have possibly at this stage that will help me to shape a response for the next encounter? So I'd like to reframe the, the question. There is no first. We, we don't believe in that in the first transaction there is everything, as Bern said, that uh, we don't believe that it is uh, true for organizations. Therefore, we try to have a broader picture of the organization. Therefore, we use, as I presented two days ago, the system dynamics model with 10 dimensions that uh, gives us information about an organization because uh, uh, we like to have a background of the organization and we have two ways to get this information. One is to, to let them work on these dimensions and to name these dimensions. For example, when we work with a, a company, uh, we did uh, recently with six uh, in the board we worked with the board and we, we made three pairs and they <coughs> analyzed or described their organization by the ten dynamics. Therefore, we have a questionnaire and open questions to, uh, to fix it and then that we, we let them present their organization to each other and uh, that's very interesting uh, what comes up uh, about the views of the organization. And a second uh, way is our expert view. We also, as consultants, uh, diagnose the organization by the system dynamics to have a, an own view. Sometimes we combine that and we can integrate uh, employees in the process and all this kind of uh, information. But we, 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 we're not uh, so focused on the specific, uh, how the first question is, uh, is asked. We, we are uh, oriented to the goal that that we get, but uh, we uh, want to see the background of that all, and that gives us uh, information about the organization. We somehow combine in that systemic ideas, like uh, the constructivist position, and also, as you may have seen, the boundaries of Eric Byrne, uh, how is an organization doing at the boundaries, is there coming information in and out, do they have a picture of the market and all this kind of information um, uh, that we, we gather to, to have uh, one or two dimensions to get the foot into the door and we contract that with the organization and uh, that's also a co-creative process of the constructivism and we have the experience uh, that by this uh, working fractal to have two dimensions of the ten to intervene in, uh, we uh, influence the whole uh, process because the dimensions are not uh, a hundred percent separated from each other. And that's, this is the process we, we have and we, we mostly work with, uh, in, in Germany there are a lot of um, uh, middle-sized manufacturing companies and service companies, let's say between one and uh, one, 100 and 1,000 uh, employees and it uh, functions very well on, on this level. I don't know how it is with uh, 50,000 or uh, that really makes a difference. It's interesting what you both bring, uh, because my experience sometimes, according to the level of awareness of organization, uh, according the awareness of organization has about the reality, about uh, their perspectives consciously, uh, some organizations request uh, higher structure just at the beginning and other, other organizations are more open and freely to have uh, an emergent program. And I see these two realities in my experience. I'm... Just, sorry. Yeah. I um, relate a lot to what you were saying, Helen. I'm attentive to how, how the information is brought to me, who I'm dialoguing with. And I think something that's, because I work, my work is um, essentially in coaching and training in cr cross-cultural issues. So something that's very important for me is the frame of reference. 
so of the person who's coming to me and listening to all the information that's been given, where that's coming from and how that fits in with the initial request, which is the initial one and it sometimes is not the one that we're going to address at the end. That emerges. So there's... Um, for me, that's the that's the very first stage, and then I I try to see I observe. I guess we were talking about artifacts um, earlier, so there's all those visual things that you can observe that you can maybe going into the organisation, just sitting in the waiting room, or the waiting hall, and just observing what's going on, and that's for me is picking up the frame of reference of then the organisation. So it's the person that contacted me, the organisation, and being able to hold those and being attentive to my frame of reference, and that's the phenomenological part that you were talking about. So what's going on for me, what is mine, what belongs to the person I'm talking to or to the organisation. Yeah. So I think those are... To resume, there are probably the three levels, the, the artefacts and the values that are being conveyed, and then what's really going on. Yeah. Um, for me, I look particularly at um, what's the change they want to make, and uh, who are the person who, will be, who can be involved in making this change, because as an external consultant, we have a very limited scope in an organization. So first, who are the people who will take the lead and um, are they willing to take that um, a change within the organization? First, they are um, brought together and um, then we form a contracting process in the form of finding the right hypothesis. Instead of saying, this is what we need to work with, we form hypothesis and it's not that the consultant forms the hypothesis, they form the hypothesis. And even when they form the hypothesis and start making the action, who is the relevant person in the organization who can judge that they are getting the result? Mm -hmm. Because again, we can't judge whether it's a... In that way, the consciousness or the perception level increase, it's their business, they know uh, their consciousness about their business. So if we can identify these people and then see how they interact in the process. That can be a very systemic dim dimension of what is interfering to the change which can be facilitated there. Mm -hmm. So instead of getting into the perspective of dimensions, maybe asking them examples of what's happening there, like in the form of sometimes I ask questions, it's, it's in the book Leadership Challenges by Posnus, where what are the emails you have been getting for six months? which you would like to um, change, you know, and what does it say about what's happening? Or what kind of uh, phone calls you get? So these things and Burns, uh, Bern Schmidt's method of what situation keeps happening again and again which you want to change? So I use a theatre metaphor of what I learned in Oxford, particularly who is the director, who are the actors, who can shape the process, who are the script writers? So if we can identify that and and bring a narrative culture first. First they must be able to talk. If they are not talking, then that's the first intervention, is how they can exchange in a healthy way. Without that, introducing a learning culture becomes very difficult because if they don't engage or narrate, then it becomes difficult. So the sense of, okay, enough narration is happening, then how they can use a learning frame, because that's the part of the consultant to bring the learning frame to the narration. Mm -hmm. Then, after learning, then it goes to a shared reality. Yes, this is how we share, and the shared strategy, mm -hmm. and shared performance, mm -hmm. and shared leadership. Mm -hmm. of, uh, that's the systemic, the birds flying together of Bunch Myth, which I have been having as a metaphor to apply in organization. Mm -hmm. This is how I got now. I think the interesting thing about this is there's um, sometimes an assumption that we will do the work and I think for me true co-creativity is experienced so 
the dialogue starts from the very, very first encounter and for me has to include the possibility that we don't do the work or that someone else is better placed to do the work. So in your notion that some organisations are very linear, start from the goal and work backwards, others are more comfortable with emergence, this is absolutely my experience. And for me, um, what I'm really interested in is how can we co-create the conditions for a context relevant change to emerge within the organization. Whether they see that the meaning we make together out of our coming together, the way we, what we take into account, how we clarify our roles, how we um, shape the purpose, who's involved, the methodology, all of that. For me, if there is the potential for dialogue and contracting from the very first encounter, that's really important. If they say, no, 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 we have to do it this way, we have to do it this way, we have to do it this way. Yeah. So the, the reason I'm saying this is that sometimes I'll get a request that brings panic in me or an intense pressure to respond very quickly. So I will feel that and think there's something in the culture of this organisation where they have to get from A to B like that. And if I come back and say, yes, I'm free today, I can talk today, da 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 da, then I'm already participating in that dynamic. So how can I use that information to invite the client into a space um, where, where there is time to talk about meaning but doesn't discount the urgency they feel? Does this make sense? It makes sense. So that physical response is so interesting. I do experience such situations and I, took, I take a meta position at that time and okay, explain sorry, to them. Can you speak a bit slower? Um, <laughs> I explain to them that, yeah, how I experience them. And uh, one thing which has benefited at that time is if we can include someone on the next level and a peer and yes. someone on the top, do they also think it has to be done the same way? Mm -hmm. that, that gives them a, a different perspective because people within the organization talk about mm -hmm. what can be done differently also mm -hmm. rather than we telling them. Mm -hmm. So instead of cutting across mm -hmm. to them, asking them who else can also be a part of this. Mm -hmm has been very helpful in moving them forward. Mm -hmm. Another is to get a, a context, a, a structure to the context is, which will get the maximum mileage. We may form many hypotheses, but will this get the maximum mileage for the organization and who can decide on that? Yes. Mm -hmm. That one question, if they think, and if they form the hypothesis and start the experiment, where it brings a larger focus because touching that spot gives the maximum mileage for them. Even a single step gives a lot of mileage. <laughs> it happened in a place where they asked to train the trainer program for me, from me, where I have to train some internal trainers within the organization. But after the study, we found it's interdepartmental coordination which is a problem. It's low. So we worked on the interdepartmental coordination and they found a great mileage. So when we, st one other point, uh, maybe that's similar that you do, we first look at the attention of the organization. Where are they really dealing with? What are they doing there? Are they talking about football all the Mondays or are they dealing with fears because McKinsey people are also uh, running around in the organization but because the attention, uh, attention means money. Mm -hmm. And then we look at, uh, is there a, a normative uh, attention in the organization? Do the people know what is their, uh, the contribution they give to society or to something higher goal? Then we look at the strategic level. Do they know where they are going to? And then to the operative level. Where is, is it efficiently? Is it uh, effectively what they are doing? That is uh, for organizations for us very important how are they oriented and because uh, communication processes, problem solving processes uh, somehow follow this dimension. It, it's not 
it is not a uh, hundred percent sure, but uh, there has to be the attention has to be focused in an organization, and if it is too much divided and uh, or uh, uh, contradictory attentions, uh, then uh, a lot of uh, costs are, are there. And uh, therefore, we, as we, as I said, we we like to start to to let them present their organization, and also from the decider's mm -hmm. level, not, not from the, often the one who presents uh, the organizations to others, the one from, of the personal department, mm -hmm. but uh, people of the personal department have a certain culture too, uh, is, it might not be relevant for the organization, therefore we have to, to come to the people and that is a, a very important condition for us. Therefore, sometimes if that is not possible, we, we don't work with the organization. If they only say we, we need better communication, please train us this group and this, uh, in communication, we, we can think about uh, whether we, we do any harm to the organization, whether it pays or <laughs> do it, but, but that's not organizational development in, in, in a pure sense. sense. We have to come to the relevant roles uh, to to, we have to come to the... Oh, I, I am so sorry. Um, uh, I just um, need you to speak a bit about that. Yeah. And so if you can... I, I haven't <coughs> understood anything about this, um, what happens in the organization yeah. after, you, uh, uh, after uh, the person presents the organization from the personnel department mm -hmm. after mm -hmm. that. But you did. <laughs> I get. I. I the, the, uh, the the cut uh, block it. I, I get one one point you told Gunter, that is uh, about uh, accept work or not. Uh, maybe we are talking. I guess uh, something about the conditions in order to see the the this work is. A development work if we can as professionals contribute with the organization or if uh, the organization invited us to collapse with their culture <laughs> so we are not available uh, we don't, don't, do not have value for them and it seems that we have some way to access this uh, is that what we are mm -hmm. the common meaning that we have uh, okay uh, what I understand is um, it's not being too tight about we won't work. At the same time, organization wants certain things. And how do we align and start somewhere and then work? That's what you mean. So may, may I propose an uh, inversion? In my experiences, sometimes I say no. When you say no for a work, what conditions exist? And you identify and you say no. I will do not. I will refuse an offer for you. For me, there could be a number of conditions, but one of the key is how do we create accountability for the success of a piece of work? So for me, the contract is a contract that's held within the organization. I see it like a living contract, and it relates to what you said about getting stakeholders mm -hmm. from within the system who are leaders and decision makers to take responsibility with me for what it is we're doing, the meaning we make out of it, who's responsible for what, what resources get invested in it, um, how I am communicated about in my role with the rest of the organization, mm -hmm. how we respond to unplanned, unpredictable, emergent events, um, how we evaluate success, how we change as we go along. So one of the conditions that has to be present for me mm -hmm. is the willingness of the original commissioner of the work to involve a wider stakeholder group, especially mm. if it's a complex piece. Okay. If they say no, you have to come in and take responsibility for it as an external person. Um, to me, that, that, that's not effective. That, that is an ethical <coughs> dilemma. For me, I have um, two words that 
two ideas that come to mind is um, I work a lot with awareness. And I think there's, in accepting or not accepting work, there's awareness and there's responsibility. And so where does that lie for me and where does that lie for the organisation? And it needs to be, I need to be aware of what's going on, what the responsibility I will be taking on through this and also the organisation. Mm -hmm. And most of my work is helping them to become aware of cultural issues mm -hmm. at an either a group level, but it can be an individual level with cross-cultural training. And then that the responsibility is with them so they can empower themselves to find the right way of going about things. And, mm. okay. and so where's, so it's about that, what's their responsibility and what's my responsibility. Mm. And I guess taking on too much responsibility is not, it's not, unbearable. Yeah, not possible mm -hmm. for me. Okay. So from, from the systemic uh, uh, um, tradition, I'm, I'm focused on uh, uh, to, to, uh, to get in contact with, this, with the system yeah. from the very beginning. And in Japan I learned there is between the yes and no, there is a, <laughs> a range of... Uh, and therefore, uh, if someone in the, from the very beginning tries to, to talk about and... Uh, Gives an, uh, something to a task for uh, third persons. We we say from the very beginning, everyone who is in contact with us is part of the system, is part of the culture, is part of the the consultancy work we do. And there's no talking about third parties, and this is important for us. This is an entrance door. Um, but I think we we don't say no. We say we offer this and this under this, these conditions, mm -hmm. and then uh, we pr we check whether they are maybe then a responsibility or uh, is, the, is it ethically okay? Uh, is proved, uh, but we, we we normally use if there is an, uh, not not only we we don't do any pitches. Uh, Maybe you know that uh, mm. five consultancies are asked, and then, but we, we mm -hmm. check uh, how to uh, to give uh, how to show our uh, our performance, our expertise from the beginning in the offer, uh, and then we then uh, there is a dealing of whether it is taken or not. But we are uh, uh, focused. And that's kind of, I, I think, um, in TA I would say that a, a part of potency we show from the very beginning. We, we know about processes, we know about uh, um, uh, um, development processes, so we, we are not that much on the idiom, the power is only in the client. Sometimes it isn't. The power is in the relationship, might be. And, uh, in the bigger system, we, we form a, a new system. If we are with a, an organizational system and a consultancy system, then there is a, is a bigger, bigger system as well through the contact, and that brings in new, new uh, aspects that had, are not in the client system before. And, uh, okay, so it, it seems um, uh, some perspectives. Once considering. Uh, since the beginning, the emergent, and, and others offer uh, uh, what you are telling that they understand, offer a methodology, and then deal with the emergent. That it seems it's it's like that. I understand. Emergence well. and design. Okay. Both, like Peter okay. Stengi described that the system design and system emergence, and how you will bring that. Yes. Um, for me, recently I have been also seeing a kind of a hot potato which is transferred to the external consultant. Yes. Which they cannot manage themselves, they just throw it to someone who can. But it's okay to hold it if they are also willing to be a part of it. Yes. Then we can do some cooking with that. <laughs> <laughs> but 
if they are not willing to hold it, then it's, <laughs> <laughs> they want the consultant to hold everything. So I, I once brought a, a, a box with hot potatoes to a company who worked okay. with, <laughs> made a group work with real hot potatoes. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> And another thing is to be mindful of how an external intervention is used. Like for example, they ask a coaching for a subordinate. The manager may use it as he's not okay, that's the reason I'm coaching him. Yes. Yeah. Even giving him a coaching intervention itself can be a, um, can be to, to do something in that system. So to talk about it and bring it that bring it to the surface. So it's always I learned in the beginning stages from Burnt is to always involve people in the uh, level one above, maybe mm -hmm. one below in other areas. So that it's a, it's not a partial reality. Yeah. And that yes. we can never get the full reality. But mm -hmm. at least a consensus reality of mm -hmm. what is there. Then if I am not able to get that then I offer that if I get what can be the benefit and if I don't get what will be the consequences, I think, and leave it to them for a decision on that. Mm -hmm. I think there's something about the theory of change we bring in to our work and how that then informs the way mm -hmm. we intervene. So for me, um, in simple terms, I think of change as first order or second order change. And in TA terms, second order change, transformation is a shift in frame of reference, which is a shift in meaning. Yeah. So for me, a lot of the interventions in the, the, well, the whole process really is about enabling co-creation of new meanings and shared meanings in the process. So the, the solutions and the, and the um, choices that are made about how to resolve any issues emerge from those conversations. So my focus is on how can we co-create the conditions for a different type, different quality of conversation in service of the purpose of the work. What is my role? What are other people's roles? And how do we learn from role confusion or role contamination or um, all of those ways of thinking as they emerge about what we're experiencing. So as an external consultant, like you're saying, I would bring expertise, I would bring experience and knowledge um, in respect of my particular role, but it isn't, it isn't the solution. It's, it's, um, it brings, it, I would bring that into the conversation, if you like. Whereas I think another model of consultancy is to come in at solvability and which is a different type of engagement to me. So I think what I'm saying is there's something about our clarity about our own frame of reference and if an organisation is, for me, if an organisation is totally focused on solvability then part of my ethical responsibility is, um, what am I saying here? There's something about with my theory of change and the theory of organizations I work with, um, how to communicate, what am I saying? I'm, it's about your, your thing about saying no, about yes. Concern. About concern with the solvability? Yes, so how to, I think there's something about education in, in our role. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, in a piece of work I did say no to recently, I experienced all sorts of things and I, the, the, um, when I fed back to the client I said, this is the theory of change that I would propose that I, I work with the, the language aligned, they said they wanted transformation, they wanted second order change. So I said, well, if that's what you're looking for, here's the sorts of things we might focus on, etc., etc. And then it turned out that actually that's not the deal. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So 
they said, well, can't, can't you just do a day with us and this and this and this? And I could have gone in and done a day. But there's something for me about the experience of clarity of role and integrity within role that was lacking internally that is experienced through the consultation process, even if the work with me doesn't go ahead. If this is making any sense at all. It seems, in my experience, I also see the uh, an enormous difference about our work starting with uh, clear responsibility and authority, mm. clearly defined. It. Sometimes it's not so easy to start like that. And some uh, talkings during along the process about that will be needed in the space mm. for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it seems that uh, this is the grain of reality that our experiences has. We have different approaches, but I guess that uh, it, uh, it echo in yeah. me. Yeah. Mm. Uh, this mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. one important point. Yeah. yeah. Okay. How do we experience a situation also? Yes. Well, I, I would like to connect to what you said. If they uh, say, I, we want transformation, we want <laughs> transition, that's often a, a problem. Yeah. If they have a certain model yeah. or uh, have uh, read something and then they book this flight to transformation <laughs> and, uh, and to come back to certain uh, examples, as, uh, as Burns said, I think yesterday to, to work with certain examples, not on the on the level of uh, interpretation, and I think that that more more changes meaning mm. than to discuss about uh, meaning. What what is transformation? Or, uh, to come back to the to the what is in daily company life and. How do you communicate? How many emails? How do you communicate with someone who is uh, one meter in air, but uh, we mail to each other? Mm -hmm. And how do we do that in example? And to, to identify some relevant examples uh, that that helps a lot. But first, we have sometimes we have the to put away the clouds of uh, of, of theories. Mm -hmm. In my experience, I had some works uh, that sometimes I clearly step back and do not collude with the cultural, the existing culture, and uh, we attend a clear an agreement in order to cause some impact in the culture, to bring some reality for them. And this reality sometimes is so shocking that we are never come back again. Even when we made this in the softness way. Mm -hmm. You have yes. some experience like that? Yes. What, what could you share? The, so some, so I want to tell them. Okay, the, the question you asked is? That's I would just like to give you a timing of like five, ten more minutes to finish up so we can... I had, I had some experience that when sometimes we bring some, uh, the, the organization start to share some perspective and see something real shock. Mm -hmm. For them? Real shocking for yes. them. Yes, yes. And uh, in this case, I understand that we did uh, a work in a way to bring some reality for them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Some. Yes. Sharing perspectives. Yes, yes. And so it's a point what we will do with that. Yes. And sometimes it's so shocking that even when we do in the soft way, mm -hmm. this avoid us to work because the invitation sometimes is a collusion. Yes. Collusion. Is to perpetuate something inside the organization. Yes. And yes. when we do so, sometimes it's shocking. Yes. It always is shocking. Yes. And uh, I still didn't have a, a receipt for that time, but I understand that is a very, very, very important, delicate point. Like um, once when we did a work in a sales team, in a sales team where the targets are not achieved, uh, the head of the sales 
and his manager, his manager, and the next level manager, all of us were in the same line. In the field staff, whatever the trouble they go through, the quality of the product not being good, the delivery not happening on time, it was all shocking information for the head. He was thinking everything is okay. It was very, very shocking for me. So we don't rescue them from desperation. Because I, my, my thinking about that and also my experience that uh, it's like the U model that you sometimes have to, to go through the bottom of the U uh -huh. and to really feel they sat before me uh, one board of a company and I said now all your competences don't uh, uh, exist for this problem, you, you, you have no solutions. And they said that it was not uh, uh, good for their identification as a manager. Oh, okay. But we hold that. In your experience, you normalize, you contain this. Yeah. Okay. We, we wait. In a, in a long term, in a long term program, or uh, even in a in a in an term. organizational development workshop, for example, mm. that doesn't last a, a year. Then I, my experience is that when they come to this point of desperation. You have, as we had in the morning, this minute of uh, of silence. It's more than a minute then, but always they sometimes something comes up, and uh, but it, it is not coming up if this uh, point of desperation is not felt. Mm -hmm. but they have to start from zero in the moment uh, to be to be catharsis or. Uh, one more perspective with which uh, that shocking information so large things come out what sometimes I have offered is what they can do in their level that is built as a small image then where other departments or other people are involved that is taken another image and they take a time frame of okay we will start with this where we can do some difference in our level and then initiate the change there because for them it's important to taste success uh, so we can help them to uh, chunk it into smaller pieces and then start some small work in that, mm. uh, rather than threatening them with, oh, it's, it's all bad, so maybe <laughs> smaller bits, smaller bits. But once they know that they can solve one small piece of work, that somehow motivates them to mm. get them further and further and further. Something you were saying about shocking, um, there was a, a group of four different organisations that I was asked to work with from different sectors in the UK that are having to integrate how they work together, not structurally but functionally, mm. to deliver services. And they were wanting a consultant to support the process. So I started the conversations and they said, uh, I had a lot of difficulty in, in enabling or working with people to get them to come and talk, which was the problem in the first place. And then somebody said to me, we want to transfer the money into your account for what exactly? Mm -hmm. So, And it was a lot of money. And I said, but I have no contract. We haven't agreed what I'm here to do. And they go, that's not a problem. We do that later. Um, just take the money into the account because it's the end of the financial year and if you do, exactly if you don't take it we're going to lose it so to me the pressure was unbelievable and ethically it was hideous because nobody wanted to talk about it and I thought I have to name this I, I don't want to just walk away I have to name this so I did name it in writing that this, in order to intervene, these would the, be the conditions that would have to be present. If you're going to spend this much money, you need to have a, a procurement process, blah, 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 blah. And it turned out, in this group of organizations, there'd been a pattern for years of consultants just arriving and working for days on end with no accountability. Um, and it's not a blame thing, it's just, it, it's why the issues hadn't been resolved. So I will, I will never get offered a job with them ever again. 
But that was the point, I think, of my involvement, was to be able to name these issues at a psychological level. And now they can't do that with a consultant anymore. So to me, it's, that's the success at a meta level. That's the power of TA, because I was able to say there's three levels to a, engaging somebody, there's this, there's this, and there's a psychological level, and etc., etc. And some people did understand that. It's really... <coughs> okay. So, thank you for your contribution and thoughts. Now, we were thinking of splitting into groups again.